Coach Joe, thank you so much for your time. Really looking forward to uh, chopping it up and, and catching up. It's been a while since we last talked. So for the listeners at home, will you tell us a little bit about your background, your motivation, kind of where you are currently? Yeah, so uh, uh, I'm originally from Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, as far as background is concerned, this profession got into it at a very early age, at 18 years old. So mm. I kind of found out that's what I wanted to do, just being that uh, that skinny kid growing up through high school and, yeah. you know, you weren't physically dominant. So uh, that's kind of how I started in this profession. And where I'm at currently, uh, I'm currently in the private sector. I'm a strength and conditioning coach for D1 in Birmingham, Alabama. Mm. So that's kind of a little rough background on yeah. me as far yeah. as training in the field. That's awesome. Okay. So what is your passion in life? Why do you do what you do? Right? You mentioned a little bit about where you started, but um, going deeper and, and kind of diving into that, let's pull on that thread a bit. Oh, yeah. Easy for me. You know, my biggest thing is, you know, I had some very good good coaches for me growing up, especially at a very young age. My, my father's probably one of the best coaches I've ever had in my life. So mm. having a positive impact on people, whether it's through conversation, whether it's through mentors, mentoring a young mm. person or adult or individual and helping someone change their lifestyle, whether they're old and gray or young and just enthused, yeah. uh, that's why I wake up every day to make an impact, mm. whether it's through just simple communication and inspiring people yeah. or, uh, you know, improving someone's time. That's why I wake up. I love helping people improve their life. Mm, that's fantastic. Okay. And so let's pull on the thread of, of uh, how you got to where you are, right? We talked a little bit about D1, and, and I know you've been in the college, right? That's kind of how we met is in through the college sector, right? So will yeah. you just kind of uh, dive into, like, your path and, and how you ended up in the private sector? Yeah, so uh started off. You know, at 18 years old, kind of was working at a, uh, a facility in, a, you know, Birmingham, Alabama. They started this speed and agility program, and, you know, I kind of was asked to get involved with that. And mm. That was my first very introductory approach to, to strength and conditioning was that as far as me coaching. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I started asking questions, you know, real curious, man, this is really cool. I love it. I love coaching kids, making them get better, and mm. I love the, uh, the excitement of session to session. Yeah. And very luckily, my neighbor, when we moved and relocated uh was a strength conditioning coach for alabama basketball oh wow okay my next door neighbor yeah and, uh, eight years old so i just kind of walked over and introduced myself and asked hey what do i need to do to get started in this field uh-huh. and uh so i need to intern and get some experience as early as possible uh-huh. uh from there just set up got an internship at sanford university a private institution here in birmingham mm. uh from there uh interned under a coach by the name of Thomas Rowling and mm-hmm. Jonathan Ferris. Okay. Excellent, excellent guys. Uh, and kind of to come full circle, new basketball was my passion because that's what I grew up loving. Yeah. Uh, and the guy who actually was my weights coach in high school was director of basketball at Arkansas. Mm, okay. So, you know, I, <laughs> yeah. as, as most young coaches do, they'll, they'll email the crap out of coaches, you know, <laughs> just to get their foot in the door. And yeah. I know it enough to say, you know, he could call me, yeah. or, he, or I called him, and, um, you know, I interned with him for a summer. Yeah. Uh, you know, from there, he told me the best coach to get in touch with was Corey Schlesinger, mm-hmm. who's now with the Phoenix Suns, and he yeah. was at UAB at the time. Um, interned there, and it was kind of crazy, a very unique situation, not very similar to others, I'm sure, but I was 20, and six weeks into the internship with Corey, he asked me if I wanted to train women's basketball. Mm. So, uh, I mean... From there, was in college uh, basketball. Loved it, enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, then, uh, you know, me and my wife, we went and lived in Australia. I did some strength and conditioning privately for some rugby guys. Mm-hmm. And, uh, just enjoyed life throughout my master's program with Edith Cowan. And, yeah. Uh, coming back, I just wanted to get my get my foot in the door, private sector, see what that was like, and that's where I am today. Long story, but yeah. Uh, that's Ryan today. No, that's that's awesome, and I and I love that. And so, let's um, kind of dig into some of the stuff that you learned while you were abroad, right, over in Australia, and especially working with rugby. Um, that's a sport that not a lot of people in the states get to work with or get exposed to. Um, so what did you kind of learn from there that you're able to take into into who you are now as a coach? Yeah, you know, it's very interesting because here in the United States, we uh, we glorify sport mm-hmm. and uh, we, we, we make sports like the end-all, be-all to everything. Yeah. And over there, I, I, I'll say this, I work with a few guys, I haven't worked with a lot, but mm-hmm. as far as like the rugby is concerned, those guys, they love to have a good time and they love hitting people, man. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they'll hurt themselves, but they'll get back out there and they'll hit somebody again and then 
after the match is over, they'll drink beer. It's yeah. a very funny culture. Uh, as far as what I learned, man, I learned yeah. to just not take everything serious. Yeah. You know, learn to have a good time. Yeah. Uh, you know, enjoy yourself. Enjoy being in a culture that, you know, it's just not the same as the United States. Yeah. Uh, they, they really just enjoy life. And, uh, you know, well, do they take sports serious? Yes. But do they know how to good, have a good time? Yes. And that's probably the biggest mm. thing I've taken away was just, don't stress the little stuff. Have a good time. Yeah. It's a coaching process and journey. Yeah, yeah. No, that's awesome. And that's being able to, you know, I think that just kind of goes back to being able to, it's almost like the nervous system, right? Switching from like parasympathetic to sympathetic. Like you have to be right. able to relax, right? It's like to put it more scientifically, but that's essentially the same kind of thought process, right? Like switching on, switching off. <coughs> that is correct. That's awesome. That yeah. Correct. That's super cool. Okay. And so now... With moving to the private sector, right, what are the struggles that you've kind of had um, switching from college to private, or have there been any struggles? Man, it's, I hate that this is my least favorite word, but a different kind of grind mm. from the college setting. You know, college, it's high volume of hours. Yeah. You know, the private sector, it's similar. You know, if you're a, I feel like if you're a collegiate strength coach or high school or professional, like getting in the private's a bit, you know, it's no different. It's not yeah. like you're, uh, abnormally you know you're, you're, you're giving all these insane amount of hours it's something yeah. you're used to the biggest struggle I would say is that you know in college you know your head coach tells you hey you got the kids for eight weeks yeah uh, they can train you three days a week and you got them. you got 12 kids yeah. whatever and so you're like okay man that's great and then you can really have a detailed outline plan of in that 12 eight weeks whatever uh-huh. I'm gonna attack these certain KPIs yeah. for these athletes this time of the year, whatever it is. Private, man, I'll get kids that'll come in and say, hey, you know, I want to try to do speed training, you know, once a week. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, you're dealing with parents that, you know, have, you know, and parents, you know, what I, what I love about parents, man, is they're really passionate about their kids. And, yeah. you know, they won't say they know what's best for their kid. But as professionals, that's been a bit no different than dealing with a sport coach. Yeah. Uh, um, but, you know, re-educating these parents at what speed, agil- speed and agility training is, mm. not this speed ladder gimmick, Yeah. you know, not tape over the mouth, not yeah. all this goofy looking stuff, um, and really reassuring those things. And uh, for obvious reasons, too, you've got, you know, you can see a kid once a week for four weeks and then he's not seeing you again. Yeah. So making sure that you're selling to these parents and bring it up to these parents that hey you want to see your kid improve this is what needs to happen they need to come yeah. see me x number of times it's yeah. like when you go to a doctor you know you're gonna ask the doctor hey i've got x pain yeah what medicine's gonna help well let's hope that's not the, the question but yeah. hypothetically yeah they're gonna professionally recommend hey i'd recommend this yeah so you gotta remember that and uh other struggle is, you know, it's it's about dollars. You know, you got to mm-hmm. bring in money, finding a way to craft and mold what your brand, what your market is, what you know, what dollar necessarily relates to this, you know, yeah, this household, you know, because yeah. I'll get kids from low socioeconomic backgrounds to uh-huh. you know your your very wealthy background. So it's kind of finding that happy medium of what can they afford, you know, and mm-hmm. it all comes back to you know if you love coaching kids. You know, you want to you want to get them in there as much as possible because the parents want them to get better. For you know, sure, because that could be their chance of getting out and getting in yeah. a better situation for themselves. Yeah, yeah, no, most definitely. And then uh, that's really interesting the, that comparison of uh, the sport coaches to the athletes as the parents to the athletes. I've never thought of it that way. Of like, that's essentially what the the relationship is, right? Like, the the sport coaches in college are essentially acting as the parents. You know what I mean? Um, in that sense. Yeah. So yeah, that's really interesting. I like how you put that. And then, do you think it's a benefit? You talked about the dollars a little bit, right? And I know that's like yeah. um, kind of like a taboo like word in, in strength and conditioning, right? But do you think that's a, a benefit to be able to see that side? Um, just coming from college, right? And you know there's a lot of uh, pay wage gaps and, and things like that between um, professionals. Do you think that's a benefit, being able to see the dollars a little bit more and, and know about that business side? Absolutely, and I, I'll say this, man. And my biggest thing, and I'm not knocking administrators, I'm not yeah. knocking anything about the collegiate side because I think it's wonderful, man. Yeah. I love you know being able to compete for titles and stuff. Yeah. It's great, but the reality is, and we all got to 
face this. And, you know, I was talking to a couple peers of mine the other day. They said, yeah, you know, athletic department, you know, they pay us this, they pay yeah. us that. And it's just like, well, okay, what does your administrator actually do? Yeah. Or what, you know, what's their background? And, you know, they, they talk about it. It's not in strength and conditioning. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, that's a whole nother ball of wax we could talk yeah. about. But <laughs> as far as, the, as far as the private. Yeah. What I love is that you are your ceiling of income. Yeah. And most strength coaches, you do this because you love this. You do this because mm. you want the kids to get better, your yeah. your, your clients to get better. Uh -huh. So what's so great is, like, strength coaches love taking pride in working harder than anybody in the room. Yeah. So to know that the ceiling of income is based on your work ethic, mm. you would think you'd see more strength coaches in the private. You yeah. would. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, – but man, I think it's great understanding dollars, and and the coolest thing, man, is knowing your worth. You know, mm. like with uh, you know, because of my basketball background, I'm not going to say like an expert, but when when you're dealing with these people coming in, you got to make them feel that you're the expert at this. Yeah. Hey, yeah. listen, I've got X background. Listen, yeah. you're not going to find any other strength coach that can do what I do with your child. Yeah, I'm telling you that. Now. You know, and selling that, it it's not you're selling them snake oil. It's yeah. a god honest truth. Mm. You know got a background that is equipped for improving those kids skills yeah. that parents can pay whatever yeah no no brainer yeah no brainer whatever yeah no that's a good point okay so let's dive a little bit more into the training piece right so what does your approach to training look like for different age groups right keeping in mind that you know you might not have some as long as others but generally speaking what does that kind of training look like well obviously you know we do have different uh tiers of kids that come in i've got a kid that's nine years old that comes in one-on-one uh -huh. uh, -on -one training which i love that kid yeah uh, and from that age group it's just ba very basic skill their brain's very plastic they're gonna absorb anything you give them yeah uh, um, and just going back to basic simple physical literacy literacy skills for those kids i yeah. mean most kids i mean you ask a kid to skip backwards they can't do it yeah you ask a kid to you know squat down he can't do it uh -huh. so um going very foundational in those sessions i mean you know i tell the you know i tell these this, these parents all the time that bring their youth kids in is like hey listen this stuff is going to revolutionize their capacity as an athlete down the line as they get older because if they're learning these skills between 7 to 11 yeah I'm, you imagine the skills they can conceptualize and obtain when they're 15 16 plus yeah you know, when you speak those terms parents are like oh wow yeah that's great mm -hmm. um other side of that with youth, you know, we'll get we'll get PVC pipes and stuff, and I'll teach them how to hedge, yeah. you know, squat. I'll even teach them, you know, for fun, you know, just try to how to how to snatch. I mean, it's yeah. not any load or anything. It's just you know teaching them the skill. Yeah. Uh, you know, we'll do different hopping variations, single, double leg. I try to make it as fun with those kids, just because, you know, as much as a parent wants their kid to train hard, it's got to be fun for the kid to want to come back. So yeah. Uh, you know, if you start start talking about shin angles with a nine year old, he's lost you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you know, I, I messed with that that nine year old I trained the day. I said, "Hey, man, listen, we're gonna we're gonna run fast today." Yeah. They said, "Okay, okay, okay." You know, gets real big eyed and excited. Yeah. I say, "What's the fastest animal on the planet?" And he goes, "Oh, cheetah. Cheetah's fast." You know, kids get real competitive about this yeah. stuff. Uh -huh. Okay, well, you're a cheetah, and I'm gonna chase you. Mm -hmm. And so you know, I, you'll teach him those little mechanics of you know arm action, you know leg action, very simple yeah and then you ask you say run like a cheetah or run fast you can i think it's amazing how kids can actually run yeah smoother than we give them credit for yeah if you, you if you you know just give them things that they can relate to kind of frame it yeah chin angles they can't do it yeah as far as older populations it's just a more uh i mean more generic version of the same i mean we're all dealing with kids who uh, cannot land properly, cannot yeah. sprint correctly, mm. uh, you know, lack their joints, cannot get in positions that allow them to be successful. Yeah. So training movement quality first over everything with uh. kids from seven to, I mean, adults that are 50 that yeah. I train, uh, that's everything. Mm. So, uh, in a very general, uh, way of putting it, that's, 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 that's me movement, yeah. movement quality over everything. And then whatever follows for that kid, that's what we do. Mm. I love that. Right. So, Putting it, essentially, putting it in a different terms, so framing it differently, right, for different age groups, right? That's essentially correct. what we're kind of getting at? Correct, mm. correct, correct. I love uh, it. Yeah, 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 that's really good. Okay, and so on that thread, 
what would you say that you or um, D1 does differently from other gyms across the country, right? Because, you know, in that private side, it's it's very, um, it's tough because there's pop-up gyms everywhere, right? Anybody's calling themselves a coach. So, like, how do you differentiate you guys from other gyms and, and what do you guys do differently from other gyms and what does that look like? I would say the one thing we do differently is we do have a, a, a scholastic program, mm, you know, okay. for kids to come and do training and we really... Yeah. Uh, that's probably our biggest market is, you know, the youth is, yeah. you know, between 7 and 14 years old. We get tons of kids coming in. Yeah. Uh, I would say that's what we do different and to, uh, you know, with like a lot of the things that I've been able to do with the coaches and, and continued ed, we've discussed uh, how to make these sessions more, uh, more fashion, not fashionable, but uh, better, better constructed and framed mm. for, for the, the youth kids and helping them succeed as yeah. far as progr- regressions. I feel like a lot of gyms, uh, and I'm, I'm not speaking, you know, calling other gyms bad, but yeah. I feel like there's some gyms don't do a good job of having good progressions and regressions in Agreed. place for those kids. Yeah. And what I've tried to instill with these with some of these uh, coaches that we have that are younger uh-huh. is that you got to remember, man, each individual can do certain tasks you know, well or bad or whatever, it's how it's, you know, within that training session, being okay with some kids doing things differently and being able to manage that chaos. And I would say as, as, as a coaching staff, we do an unbelievable job of catering the programming specific to each individual child's needs Mm. and walks the door. Yeah. That'd be the biggest thing. Uh, And as far as adult training is concerned, that's a different end of the spectrum is, you know, like your adult strength training classes. Yeah. I would say all the all the coaches on staff are very well equi- equipped mm-hmm. to organize and cater programming and prescribe programming based on each individual. I mean, we've got yeah. adults that come in with low back pain. Yeah. And you know, it's it's funny because there's a parent that came the other day to do the class and said, "Hey, so are y'all going to require me to put a bar on my back?" Mm. And you know, I said, "Well, yeah. no, sir. I mean, what's what's your injury history?" He said, "Oh, yeah. well, I've had a, you know, an L5, you know, whatever." We yeah. Say that. Oh, well, no, sir. Every workout program is catered to each individual yeah and i try to pair it to collegiate because i feel like the collegiate and professional system does a great job of that yeah and they, they they really like that i mean as you find these uh these parents of child of, of children and these adults they really love the fact that that program is specific for them yeah so they feel like they're paying for something that's for them yeah yeah agreed okay and so um, coming into a gym, right? So a kid or a parent or you know anybody comes into the gym for the first time, what does a typical assessment look like, and does that differ for different types of clientele? I would say generally yes. I mean, each trainer that we have, some of them are you know uh, you know have a strength conditioning background of being in collegiate setting, and you got yeah. some people that come from a general health and wellness background. Yeah. But for the most part, I mean. Uh, I've kind of restructured the way we do the assessment process with the, you know, with getting these clients in the door. Yeah. I think priority number one is finding out, okay, what's your injury history? Yeah. Yeah. Before yeah. I thought asked them to do a warm up or anything. Yeah. What is it? Yeah. Uh, what's your health history? Oh, yeah. you've got sickle cell. Okay, that's very good to know. Yeah. Uh, or uh, do you have type one, type two diabetes or, or whatever mm-hmm. it is. Knowing yeah. those things is so important because yeah. you don't want to have someone have an episode yeah. in, a, in a session or have something happen yeah. and you had no clue. That's your priority number one when people yeah. come in your door. Mm-hmm. Um, that's number one, number two. Yeah. But down the line, a very a very modified remedial version of the FMS. Mm, okay. I mean, you know, as much as like I didn't use movement screens in college yeah. because when you would only deal with 12 athletes and you're used to seeing, okay, well, that girl's ankles are taped year round. Yeah. She's probably got bad ankle mobility. Yeah. Uh, you know, very modified, you know, some kind of overhead squatting pattern, you okay. know. Uh, and I've, you know, some type of inline lunge, you know, can they do, can they do a push up? Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, um, you know, they're very, very general things. Can they hinge? Can yeah. they, can they bounce on one leg? The basics, uh, yeah. Very, very basic stuff just because yeah. it gives us, you know, and I tell the coaches this all the time, it gives you a rough idea of where that client is at. Mm, and yeah. up the time when they come in for an assessment for free, it's a good selling point. Hey, listen, yeah. I'm not going to charge you for this session today because I want to make sure that I'm equipping you with the tools to get closer to your goals yeah. when you get in the door. Because, and they'll respect that, that you go through a very thorough process of what they look like, how they yeah. move. Uh-huh. Um, I mean, that's very important. It tells them you take their body and their health and wellness very serious yeah yeah i like that okay 
And so pulling on that thread and going down that path, right? What does a typical strength training session kind of look like for, um, you know, whether it's a, a young athletic population or an older group? What does that kind of, generally speaking, look like? Well, you know, tip, uh, how most programs should be set up. I mean, we'll obviously start with some soft tissue prep, some pillar prep. Uh-huh. Um, you know, based off restrictions and mobilization issues of the of the of the child, the adult. Yeah. Uh, then we'll move into you know a more dynamic warm up specific to what we're going to try to achieve in that lift, whether it's uh, linear speed, whether it's squatting, whether it's hinging. Yeah. Uh, we move into those main lifts, and every pattern is specific to each individual. Like I said, with the progressions, regressions for the squat, whether it's a back squat, mm-hmm. goblet squat. Yeah. Uh, you know, a barbell RDL, trap bar deadlift, whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, down the line, some kind of vertical press, vertical pull, horizontal pull, horizontal press. We always do modify versus that. Okay. And at the tail end, there will be some level of metabolic work, some, yeah. some kind of conditioning. So nothing, nothing far fetched from what you would see yeah. in a uh, in a collegiate setting weight room. Okay. I hope. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Okay. And then, so in contrast to that, or I guess in in complement to that, um, what does the speed training kind of look like? You talked a little bit bit about the nine-year-old for example right but say a little bit more older groups um or you know more competitive uh athletic populations what does that speed training kind of look like yeah so all i mean in, in very broad uh terms all, all your skipping variations skipping for distance skipping for height uh-huh. uh i've adopted is the rudiment series yeah from uh from uh dan path and uh-huh. you know my mentor bushek snyder and, and adam yeah. petway but We've adopted those things, you know, double leg bounding, uh, double leg hopping, laterally, uh, linearly, um, single leg. Um, as far as skipping patterns, your, you know, your A skips, your B skips, your C skips, all those skipping variations. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that is, I, I hope that's very general and answers the question. It's yeah. Kind of real broad. Some of, as far as, uh, you know, more competitive athletes, you know, yeah. we're getting more specific stuff with, uh, with banded sprints, banded uh-huh. marches, sled marches. Uh, I'm trying to be very general because, as you know, we got multiple people walking the door, but yeah, uh, nothing, nothing different than what you would see. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I hope no. that answers the question for you. Want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, essentially, you know, like a like a almost like a vertical integration, right? So you're you're hitting a lot of different qualities or a lot of different um, pieces of the pie, right? And so that's that's good to hear. You know what I mean? It's it's a very um, holistic approach, if you will. So um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. yeah. I like that. Okay, and so. Uh, what kind of technology are you guys afforded or are you afforded any type of technology and how do you implement some of that kind of stuff in terms of like monitoring wellness and that thing? So I'll say this, we're, uh, we don't have a lot of equipment, Okay. Uh, probably the most basic thing. And you know, uh, obviously it would be great to have a bod pod or something yeah. like that, but we do have a relationship with some people through in body, okay. you know, the in body test, yeah. um, you know, to get that, and that is actually to add to the assessment process. That is one of the things we do when they come in, because most of the time we'll use that for um, the adult populations that come in. If they're goal, which ninety percent of them are going to say, "I want to lose weight." Yeah. Uh, so, getting a rough idea of where that is at, uh-huh. where they start, uh, we will use in body tests. I know that's probably not technology, but yeah, uh, that's very techish for this facility. Yeah, yeah. Uh, then on the other end, we did purchase some laser timing systems. Okay. Because I through Zybeck, they've been doing the NFL Combine for I think nine or ten years. Okay, but uh, we use we use that the laser timing systems. Uh, you know, we do have a jump mat that yeah. we use uh, most of the time. That'll be very. We don't use it as often as we like, but what we are using it for is when we go in and do these team training deals. Yeah, you know that is part of our lay the foundation, the groundwork. Uh-huh. You know, seeing what 40 looks like or their 10, 20 yard acceleration. Uh-huh. Uh, basic change of direction skill, you know, a broad jump, a vertical. Yeah. Uh, you know, things of that nature. And we'll use that as a very basic assessment piece for, you know, where, where a kid's at. And most sport yeah. coaches really enjoy that, especially in the high school and team training side, knowing that, hey, that they're tracking what, uh, what our athletes are doing. So that's mm. very, very remedial on the technology side. Yeah. Very basic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but still getting some stuff done, right? Still getting some hard numbers on some kids um, in some yeah. specific context. So I like that. And then going back to something you said earlier, um, just for the listeners that may not know, will you just uh, define pillar prep a little bit? Pillar prep. So in other words, everyone uses that term a little bit different. But one thing mm-hmm. uh, one thing we'll do is we'll do different stretch holes, different poses as far as hitting the ankle. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the thoracic spine. Yeah. Um, from there, 
every every coach I've talked to, their pillar prep is a bit different. Yeah. But it all depends on the sequence of how that lift's going to go. So obviously, we're going to do a lot of pressing or whatever. One of my biggest things I like to do, and I adopted this from Corey Schlesinger, we'll always do mm. some uh, some crawling patterns. Okay. Some tough thing. You know, maybe we'll even throw in some cartwheels. Yeah. Uh, um, that's what I would identify as pillar prep. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And then, of course, you know, doing some stuff as far as, you know, trunk stiffness and, mm. uh, like, you know, some pallet presses. Yeah. Um, okay. And any kind of work, yeah, all that stuff. But uh, they're very basic answer, but yeah, yeah. that's why I identified as pillar pro. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, no, I just know a lot of young coaches coming in, you know, um, like you said, everyone defines it differently. So I think it's uh, it's cool to hear how, you know, you define it in this context. And then... Um, on yeah. that same token, for young coaches that might not know, um, will you describe what InBody is and what that kind of looks like and how you guys use it? Yeah, so it's just a, uh, basically, uh, it's a device you step on. It's got electrodes on the bottom for your mm. feet to step on. Um, and you grab the handles and um, I really don't know the full scope of it. All I know is it goes from one side of the body to the next, measuring energy okay. from one side to the next. Depending on, and it just, uh, I'm trying to think of a way to described a bit further is that is that um, that's the sim- same uh, type of technology as a uh, bioelectrical impedance right bia yes yes, okay. yes 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 i'm sorry i was looking for the right term but yes oh no we're similar yeah. to bi- biological impedance okay um gosh i wish i had our nutritionist answer this question for me <laughs> but that's but but in other words we'll do that uh you know it, it kind of stinks because we'll have people that come first thing in the morning yeah and do it and it's so accurate I yeah i had uh, there's someone that comes to our facility that also has access to UAB and mm. the and the, uh, uh, the nutrition side, the nutritional uh-huh. department. And I said, hey, can you do me a favor? Can you see what your body fat is on the, the DEXA compared to this? Yeah. And it's not far off. It's like plus or minus a percent uh-huh. or two. But then when people do it like later in the day, it's, yeah. it's, it's waste because it factors in water. And mm-hmm. uh, but uh, but that's that's a, hopefully a very basic. Yeah. Uh, answer for you <laughs> yeah 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 no most definitely you know just again just kind of seeing what the lay of the land of, of what you guys have and then you talked a little bit about team training right and so obviously yeah. you guys have your facility and, and you train individuals and clients and, and maybe small groups but how does that team training kind of fit into it and, and what does that um piece look like in the grand scheme of um your day-to-day yeah so um a big thing for us as far as the business side of things is trying to get involved with those those schools and those communities. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as day-to-day, I mean, we're stretched all over. I mean, we've got anything from a baseball program, softball program we're working with, to yeah. a basketball. Um, you know, we're probably going to be working with this this business right down the road from us that does wrestling. Yeah. Uh, you okay. know, they're, they're, they're really thought into this stuff. I, I guess it helps if one of the coaches was a athlete at uh, Iowa mm. wrestling with huge and yeah. uh, so as far as day to day man it's I would say because most of these schools have their athletic period from 1 1 p.m. onward uh-huh. so afternoon is like super heavy yeah. especially in the private sector from a team training perspective most teams don't train in the morning you okay um, I, I think we have one team that does it very early in the morning but for the most part, if you're in the private sector and you're doing team training and everything, you're busy from 1 p.m. till probably 8 p.m. every night. Mm, okay. Uh, and that's just that going to their facility and using their equipment type deal, or what is that? Yes, yes, okay. yes. So some some programs, if they got small enough teams, we'll have them come to our facility and work yeah. with us. But most of the time, it's so much easier for the sport coach to know, hey, uh, you guys are going to be using our facility. That way he doesn't have to leave campus. He or mm. she doesn't have to leave campus yeah. uh, most of the time we'll go to those schools and uh man it's you know especially in college and i know you know this one yeah but you'll deal with uh you know lack of equipment or whatever mm. oh my goodness yeah yeah high schools you go to these high schools you'll have you know their heaviest dumbbells will be 50s mm. but three you know three sets of 50s yeah and you're dealing with you know some high school football kids yeah. and you're just kind of like man like yeah you, you, can't really back squat well, but I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of, you're trying to be very creative, and it's honestly a different animal every day. You'll, yeah. you'll go in the weight room, and you'll uh, you'll think you'll plan your your training program for using yeah. specific racks or whatever. But uh-huh. there'll be another team in there that you didn't know was going to be in there. Yeah. So that's that's a different animal. Yeah. As well, a lot of time management sounds like that, huh? Like like a lot of a lot of skills being developed that were um you would use in the college setting as well, you know. So, uh, 
percent. And uh, what what's what what gets you know sometimes frustrating, especially on the high school side, is you know you'll it's no different than dealing. You know, a lot of these string coaches talk about oh I want to get into high school or whatever. Man, it's no different in the high school because mm. you're dealing with similar sport coaches who yeah. have the similar ideologies of what their team needs or yeah. what they want. Uh-huh. Uh, but oh yeah, it's from a from a planning perspective, it's. You yeah. gotta think on the fly like you do in college. Yeah. Oh, well, I guess we don't have the racks. I guess we gotta make something else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Make it all happen. Yeah, make it all happen with what you got, huh? So. No okay. And then moving forward a little bit more, um, kind of just looking at the structure of of D one. What does that look like? So you have strength and conditioning. Is that pretty much um, the main thing that you guys offer? Or do you guys offer nutritional services, and how do you guys work together? If so. Yeah. So as far as the nutrition side of things, I mean, we do we do sell. Uh, you know your body armors in the in the in the store in the yeah. uh, facility and yeah. your protein drinks, very basic stuff. But yeah. as far as nutritional side of things, we don't have a nutritionist on staff. Okay. Uh, what we do is we have built relationships in the area with some companies that, uh, that do offer nutritional services that mm. are registered dietitians. Okay. So we do utilize them quite a bit. Yeah. Unfortunately, some of the a lot of the members. They're, they're interested or disinterested and yeah. they just kind of want workouts they can drink beer on Thursday, Friday. <laughs> yeah. so you'll run into that, but we do have some members that are like, hey, I would really like to talk to a registered dietitian yeah. and we'll play that. That is something that is a bit difficult it's in the private side one is that if you don't have uh, if you don't have a nutritionist on staff, it's very, I'm trying to think way to put this. You try to be very professional in your advice, but not give specific enough advice yeah. to where it gets yourself in trouble. Yeah, you know? staying in that I, scope I, then, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'll get athletes all the time, hey, how much, what supplements do I need to take or yeah. what, you know, whatever. And I'm just kind of like, listen, buddy, yeah. what are you eating for breakfast, lunch, dinner? Yeah. Oh, well, I'm having cornflakes yeah. and this and that. Yeah. And then you kind of adjust that and yeah. tell them to sleep more yeah. and uh, try to give them as very – basic advice as possible it's not touching anyone's lanes but yeah i'll always reference them to some kind of nutritionist mm. or uh, some kind of page that would yeah. lead them in the right direction yeah uh-huh. yeah no I, I completely get you it's a sticky situation especially in you know today's day and age where there's so many fine lines and red tape around some things so uh yeah that's a you know that's the wisest approach you can take and so um, moving forward into to close to this last segment here, so leadership yeah. and continuing education kind of stuff, right? What is your um, approach on this, and what are some resources that have had a big impact on you? Resources that have had a big impact on me, I would say people. Mm. Uh, I think continuing ed, you know, it's one thing to I'm trying to way to put this. It's great going over reading material. Yeah, it's great going over all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But sometimes what's in the reading material is not really reality. Mm, no. Yeah, no, you know it's great. It's great to say, okay, well, in this program, you're gonna do X, Y, and Z thing for a warm up. You're gonna do this, but reality of the situation is, is there's nothing better than being in the trenches yeah. and talking. But have been in the trenches. Yeah. As far as continuing ed, no, no, nothing different than what's done in the college setting. In this um, instance, we'll go over basic, you know, pillar prep, warm up yeah. progressions. You know what that looks like. What's a timeline that I go by, or any other coaches go by? Yeah. Uh, we'll go over progressions, regressions along. You know, some some plyometric progressions. Uh-huh. And, uh You know, um, you know your basic human movement patterns: your squatting, your hinging, your pushing, your pulling. All those good qualities. Yeah. And on the back end, conditioning or whatever's needed to fill those gaps for that particular athlete. Mm. Uh, but as far as continuing to add outside of that. What I try to do is I find out what the coaching staff says they want to learn, what they want to know, yeah. and I get them in front of people that know the best. Yeah. So, like, there's a coach on staff, you know, he uh, does, a, does a fabulous job and trains track and field athletes. Yeah. Well, he had a serious case of hamstring issues last track season. Uh-huh. So I said, hey, man, listen, do you want to get better at track and field? Do you want to be the best track and field strength conditioning coach? He said, okay, yes, I do. I said, hey, listen, I'm going to connect you with Boo Sheck Snyder. Yeah. If anybody that knows yeah. preparation and return to play, return yeah. to action, knows how to do it better than anybody that I know personally, yeah. the sponge yeah. gives off loads of information. Most definitely. I said, I need to get in touch with Boo. Um, another staff member of ours, 
he's very interested in max aerobic speed as uh-huh. far as conditioning pertains to soccer athletes. Yeah. Well, uh, one of my uh, one of the students I was in school with, Ethan Cowan, he yeah. now works for uh, Canberra uh, Raiders rugby, the okay. women, and so he's very good in that aspect. So yeah. Like, okay. Let me connect you with him. So I. Juan, I don't know if you agree or disagree with that, but that, that's my biggest thing is find mentors that have been through the trenches. Yeah. They're going to help you through that because it's great reading that book, knowing what that book says, but it's another thing to actually do it. Yeah. Yeah. The application is often far removed from the text. So, um, like you said, when you go into these gyms and, and things, you know, these facilities and things aren't always as, as uh, planned, it's super helpful to you know, ask questions because you can't ask questions to a book, right? Um, yeah. So that's huge. That's really huge. Okay. And what does it look like in terms of like internships? Do you guys offer internships or what does that look like a, for um, your facility? We do. Uh, we do offer internships, you know, obviously semester to semester and yeah. obviously help the better. Yeah. Um, I think the cool thing about the private sector is we do have the ability to, you know, if the opportunity presents itself to pay. Mm, yeah. But you can't pay it as an intern and I think you know, some intern, uh, you know, we had this guy who came the other day as far as an internship and he was curious and, yeah. you know, he was so hung up about doing college. Yeah. And I said, okay, man, that's fine. I said, but I'll tell you this. How are you paying for your rent? Hmm. I said, well, my parents are helping me. Okay. Well, let me put it this way. If you help and do a class, you're getting X dollar per hour. Yeah. And you're actually getting money in your pocket to go do things you want to do. Yeah. And who's to say you cannot intern at that facility at the uh the university while you're working mm. most facilities are going to understand you need to make money yeah to, be able to come help them mm. so uh as far as that's concerned we always what i what i try to sell a lot of the coaches that come here to intern is hey listen if you're bought in to you know what this facility provides and you're interested in mm-hmm. making your own brand and, and, and being you as a coach and having your own schedule and yeah. uh, really want to be very good at this, there is opportunity to make more money here. Yeah. You know, I try to make that because most kids, they'll go to an internship and then after six months, they'll be like, oh, I got to go find a job. Yeah. And it's like, well, listen, I'm, I'm kind of helping you solve that problem. You're being, you're getting real experience. Exactly. You're getting paid to do it. Yeah. And if you do well enough, someone's going to pay you yeah. to stay. Yeah. So that's something I try to preach to the interns that walk in the door to, yeah. to think five years down the line. Don't think six months. Yeah, 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 yeah. The short term is always easy to look at, right? It's always easy to look at the, the fruit that's right in front of you versus um, what you want the uh, you know the seed to kind of grow into. So, okay. And then um, in terms of their education and um, their kind of progression, is that like curriculum-based like in college or is that a little bit more... Um, like you, you talked a lot of hands on, but what does that look like comparatively then? As far as you know, the internship. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Compared to, it's it's it's. I'll say this very similar to curriculum. It is as far as the intern. When I was talking about continuing ed, that's for just coaches who kind of have already been through it a little bit. Yeah. Uh, they they have. I mean, I'm not going to say they all have an understanding, but yeah. they have somewhat of an understanding of what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that serves that to get them in front of people that can help them be better at what they're already doing. For sure. As far as interns, um, you know, I'll I'll, I'll uh, set aside time to where they'll sit down and meet with me, and we'll talk specifically about programming, yeah. coaching, how to coach, how to run a room, mm. uh, you know, how to command a room, how you know, dealing with these young kids. Mm. They got the attention span of a squirrel. Yeah. They're gonna get ten seconds. Be yeah. creative at keeping their attention. Yeah. Uh, and we'll go specifically through that from a curriculum perspective and uh-huh. what's expected. I'll use the NSCA model okay. uh, for what they do as far as the uh, the essentials of strength training and conditioning just because yeah. it gets them a bit more equi- equipped and ready to take that exam. Yeah. It's time. That's the end goal is to get them certified yeah. and be ready to do what they do. And then uh, following that, depending on where they see interest or what they feel biased towards mm-hmm. wanting to do, I'll get them in front of you know some specific coaches to help them with what their goal is. You know, if it's mm. to be a basketball strength coach, more than likely I'll try to connect them with Corey or my buddy Adam Petwaves with the Sixers now. So yeah. you know, wh- whatever the goal is and whatever their long term plan is, it all it all depends there. But it is mm. curriculum based the internship. Yeah. 
I love it because I I know a lot of facilities don't necessarily um, offer that kind of thing. So that kind of just says a lot about you guys as a staff and you guys as a facility, right? That you put the time in to pour into young coaches like that, right? A lot of, um, you know, private facilities or even, you know, colleges. If colleges, we all know that a lot of them just have people clean, right? You don't learn a whole lot. Um, But then on the flip side of that, a lot of uh, private might just throw them in as coaches, you know, with limited experience. and. You, yeah, you know, you can only learn so much if it's not being broken down to you in bite-sized pieces. So, um, right. yeah, that's really good to hear. And then moving into this last segment, just kind of uh, a few, you know, rapid-fire questions about you personally, right? Um, if you have any, what are some quotes that you live by? Obviously, every bar bait PM sees the day, you know, every day. We're given a new day every day to accomplish whatever our goal is, mm. you know. Uh, for us and what we want to do long term and I think you know attacking every day with uh, with a purpose yeah uh, and uh, you know probably one of my favorite things I don't know who, who said it but rent rent is due every day mm. if somebody's out to get get your job yeah you know so I'll make sure you're doing the right things to stay ahead of the curve yeah and be as elite possible mm. in your profession and that's those are quotes I really like to yeah. live by day to day I love it okay what is the best advice that you've ever been given Advice. Yeah, tough question. It's a very tough <laughs> one, and I've been chewing on it. Um, oh, I got it. Find find the best at the world, the best in the world at what they do. Mm. Pick their brain, <laughs> and find a way to implement it in your environment. That's mm. the best advice I've been given, and honestly, that's exactly what I've stayed doing. Whether it's from business, contacting people from marketing or, yeah. or, or whatever and picking them and it's you know marketing's a skill you gotta yeah. find out who's the best at it and find a way to implement it in your environment I think that's very good advice to have yeah okay so in contrast to that what's the worst advice you've ever been given <laughs> oh man I don't want to mention any names right yeah it's a dangerous dangerous one <laughs> uh, worst advice I've ever been given is you know Take a job because it's a job, mm. uh, in a very broad way. Yeah, you know, it's been a profession where we're told, you know, this 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 profession is the end all be all, and yeah. uh, you know, you're you're to take this job because it's ex coach, and yeah. it you ex job down the line. Come on, mm. man, we're on this earth once. Yeah, enjoy it and enjoy what you do, and it, it's like that old saying when we were when we were kids, our parents would tell us. Do what you love and love what you do. Well, is mm. that really what we're living by if we're constantly mm. chasing these jobs and these logos? That's yeah. bogus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. The realism of it, you know. Um, just being authentic, right? I think it just kind of goes back to that. Being your authentic self and, and letting that kind of flow through you. So I really okay. love that. Yeah, I love it. Okay. Um, last kind of question here. What are some projects that you're currently working on and how can people kind of reach out to you and follow your journey? Current projects. Well, currently we're putting together a uh, you know performance testing. Yeah. You know to offer to the communities. Okay. Um, it's actually you know your uh, your very low socioeconomic communities. We're trying to get involved with some nonprofits. Yeah. Uh, give give kids an opportunity to, to get involved in sport and okay. you know see where they're at. Um, and uh, trying to get that off the ground, the sports performance testing side of things. Mm. Uh, very very remedial, very basic stuff, but yeah. it's it's stuff that I think that the community needs. And high school coaches and schools need they need and the biggest thing too with that with that project was because parents want to know where their kids are at yeah they want to they want to have data that says their kid improved yeah and by doing this we're not doing anything different than what we did in the collegiate setting validating yeah. why our job is important mm-hmm. and if we value our job it is important for us to explain to these parents how these kids have improved and this is a good way to do that agreed agreed Awesome. And then how can people kind of reach out to you and follow that journey? Yeah, so uh, I guess an email would be best. Okay. Uh, could, I, could I say that? Yeah. Why does that sound? Yeah. Okay, so uh, Joe, J-O-E dot Gurley, G-U-R-L-E-Y at D1training.com. Mm. And uh, obviously my Instagram is Joe Gurley Performance. Awesome. Well, Coach, thank you so much for your time. It's always a pleasure getting to catch up. You know, I think uh, it, you gave a, a great view of kind of what that – private side looks like the day-to-day and specifically your facility so I think that's really helpful especially for young coaches that are trying to figure out hey like maybe what should I do how should I get into this thing you know maybe should I go private for a little bit should I go intern you know I think that's 
some awesome practical wisdom. So once again, thank you for your time and uh, really look forward to connecting again soon in the future. Well, thank you, Juan. I really appreciate it. Enjoy being on.